Thanks very much, Paul. All right, here's our, the old last but not least. Uh, and we also have the fanatic over here. <laughs> but more important, about 30 years ago, a gentleman came from the town of Clinchport, Virginia. And he came to Philadelphia and he opened up Jack's Firehouse. And then he opened up, oh, it was about 20 years ago, Down Home Diner. Diner first. Diner first. Diner number one. I never one. knew that. Diner okay. number one. In the Reading Terminal Market, right over there. Jack has done more for this town and food than anybody you can imagine. He's also the guy who came up with this idea. The idea being that all these fundraisers for food charities are held in November. November is great, but there are people hungry all year round. So he was the I no 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 no. He was the idea to do it in July. Thank you. What are you going to cook for us today? Uh, I thought since we're in a Reading Terminal Market, which is the greatest farmer's market in the world, the greatest superstore. If you don't know, just go look. You can find everything in the... They tell me you can't hear me. Oh my gosh, now you can. But this is the greatest market in the world. Today I thought I'd make something kind of old and kind of new. We're going to do a lobster and bacon, macaroni and cheese. And we ain't giving you a little portions, okay? We're going to fill some bellies with this stuff, okay? And I thought, well, I'll come out here and do a big cooking demonstration. I can't really do that because you don't have enough equipment out here to do it. But I was going to talk about the ingredients I use, why I use the ingredients, where I got the ingredients, and why I got the ingredients from there. About 20 years ago, 24 years ago, I guess, 23 years ago, there were two brothers came in the Reading Terminal Market called Ivan Brothers. They've been a wonderful addition to the Reading Terminal Market for years. We've talked, we've argued, we've fought, we've talked, we've argued, we fought. We're going to fight some more, no question about it. But they decided to start doing produce. And as they grew and learned to produce, they started reaching out. And they started doing stuff like getting organic, farm range, free from the farm, free from hormones and free from chemicals. I thought it was great. They have the best mushroom selection of any place I've ever seen in the whole wide world. These are just things that they're going into to, uh, to indoctrinate or teach people new things. When I came to Philadelphia many years ago, we won't go how far back, no one was buying straight from the farm. You remember how many years ago it was, okay? You were there. But many years ago when I came to Philadelphia, no one was buying from the farms, cooking in a restaurant and serving it on the food table. They were going from, going from mainstream uh, distributors and bringing in nothing with farm fresh. I ain't that smart. I figured the closer I get to farm, better products I have. So when I started to make a lobster, macaroni, and cheese, Lobster and bacon macaroni and cheese. I decided you need lobster. Well, over here at the coastal cave, they have some great fresh lobsters. Now, if you're going to get a lobster, there are two things you want out of lobster if you're going to make a macaroni and cheese. One, you want the meat. Everybody likes lobster meat. But more important to me than the meat is the flavor. One thing I've always tried to do is get plenty of flavor in my food. And as you see me cut it open, you see juices coming out. That's kind of like the flavor, the heart and the soul of the lobster. It really is the heart and soul. We ain't going to know how far back in the heart and soul. But it's the heart and soul of lobster. The meat tastes good, but if you're only using meat, you don't have the heart. You don't got the soul. You got to get it all in there, okay? You got to get some love in there. Okay, so I got whole lobsters from over here at Coastal Cave. I didn't actually boil them. I roasted them off, but we won't go into that. I, I don't like boiling things too much. But we started with whole lobsters. I also used some mussels, and I made a stock using the mussels and the lobsters, okay? As I went ahead, I added some fennel. Everybody likes a little licorice, okay? Just a little bit. Some tarragon, some flavor. Of course, tomatoes. You know, it's hard to beat these tomatoes, aren't they? Jersey's got some good tomatoes. So does Pennsylvania. Haldeman's over here has great Pennsylvania tomatoes. I used some corn from some sweetening. Yes, I use celery and lobster bisque. I don't see anybody else doing it, but got to have a little heart and soul. So that's what I'm putting in the lobster bisque. I mean, the lobster and macaroni and cheese. It's basically almost a lobster bisque. Not as heavy a lobster bisque, not as heavy a tomato, but it's a lobster-flavored macaroni and cheese. I had Jimmy Ivine and his brother of Avini, they have a produce store. Right here, they bought a place, and they're going to open up Molly Malloy's. Is that what you call it? <coughs> And they, after your mother, well, they went out and hired this young boy by the name of Bobby Fisher. Everybody told me he could cook. 
And we do a couple things together. And I say, huh, he's not too bad. We do a couple things good, a couple more things together. Today he was over in my kitchen helping all these great chefs put together their food and helping them babysit me too. He, he did a wonderful job, okay? But we put together a lobster macaroni cheese. We used a mascarpone, uh, mascarpone cheese in it. That's almost like a cream cheese, but it's, uh, it's Italian cream cheese. I don't like Italian too much, but it's a great cheese to put in uh, your macaroni and cheese. It gives it creaminess and freshness. And of course, we use some fresh cream from out in Lancaster that you can buy in the Red Internal Market. So all these ingredients I pulled together, I got from Reading Terminal Market. When I first came to this city many years ago, I worked for a man called George Perrier. He's not a bad chef, okay? The boy can cook a little bit, just a little bit. But he made me his chef de partier, okay? In French, that meant if you had a lot of money that you wanted to spend, you want to have a special menu, I got to do that menu. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I got to... The title on the job, Chef de Partier, every time there was a great menu coming in that I would be cooking, one place I went to buy the food was Reading Terminal Market. It always had stuff in the Reading Terminal Market that you couldn't buy any place else in the world. So after I worked for George for quite some time, went up to New York with a little restaurant called Cope Bosque, which was top restaurant in New York, and came back and played chef in Philadelphia, I wanted to open my own restaurant. I chose the Reading Terminal Market. I got tired of driving all that distance to go to Reading Terminal Market where they had the best products in the world. So I opened my first place called the Down Home Diner and the Glass House Restaurant. This gentleman over here has been, been servicing me, taking care of my chemicals and all this, Termac. They helped put this together along with Philly.com. Wells Meats jumped in. Campbell's Soup donated 500 cases of soup. And we got the Philly Fanatic. All right. Thank you. Are you hungry? Here. Eat the whole thing, okay? Ah, good. Yeah, we hope Shane gets back real soon too, huh? All right, that's okay. But, you know, they're playing great no matter who's on the team, who's playing, yeah. They put together a great thing, yeah. Yeah, real nice. Come on, you want me to do something? Are you hungry? Oh, oh, yeah, we're going to fill that belly in a couple minutes here. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Go Phillies, right? Yeah.